Good morning, my beautiful diamonds. Today is November 13th, Monday morning. I hope you had as great a weekend as I did. Today we're going to focus on passion for God and Christ. And Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 and 13 reads, People of Israel, what does the Lord your God want from you? The Lord wants you to respect and follow him, to love and serve him with all your heart and soul, and to obey his laws and teachings that I am giving you today. Do this and all will go well for you. Now today's scripture makes clear that God wanted his people, the Israelites, after he delivered them from bondage in Egypt, it makes it very clear what he wanted them to do. When I think of loving, how loving God and Christ is, with all my heart and soul, the word passion comes to mind. We hear people say they are passionate about their jobs, they're passionate about their spouse, passionate about sports teams, passionate about their hobbies, and passionate about various causes. Why would we not be passionate about Jesus Christ and the things that matter? He is far better than any job, any spouse, sports team, hobby, or cause in this world. Jesus is looking for people who are passionate about him and his heavenly father, of course, and the things that matter to them. He is looking for those who will pursue him wholeheartedly and value him and his heavenly father above all else. He doesn't want us to have a mediocre love for him, but to love him passionately. The way we express our love for God and Christ is through obedience to his teachings, as noted at John chapter 14, verse 15 and 16, where it says, Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you will do as I command. Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit who will help you and always be with you. So one way we demonstrate our passion for Jehovah God and Jesus Christ is by loving others as he commands us to do. As noted at John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Another way we show our passion for him is to help people who are in need. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. So now I urge you not to allow yourself to be more passionate about anything in this world than you are about God and Christ. They are both very, very passionate about you. So we can go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, Jehovah God, Yahweh, please stir in me a passion for you and your son and for the things that really, really matter to you. In this, I pray through your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen. So that is an excellent devotional for today, my darlings. The same way we can be passionate about a lot of our hobbies and things that we really enjoy, we should have more, so much more passion for Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. And that was your empowerment for today. And now it's time for your devotional. Or maybe that will be your devotional. Yeah, I like that better. That was your devotional for today. And now for your empowerment. Okay, here we are. Remember, we are called to be Christians and not doormats. That's our focus, our empowerment thought for today. Here we I, maybe you've just realized that you need to start saying no to certain people, but you don't know where to start. To build healthy boundaries, you're going to want to, number one, is to know yourself. 
If you don't know who you are and what you want, someone else will gladly define that for you. Number two, you're going to want to own your stuff. It's tempting to think of the boundary stomper as the only problem in the relationship. Owning your part is going to help you to separate the two. Number three is to communicate your boundaries. Yes, it may feel clunky at first. That's okay. Keep trying. Number four is to hold your boundaries. Boundaries aren't about making the other person get it. They're about protecting you. Keep holding your boundaries. We're called to be Christians, not doormats. If you agree with me, can you say amen? amen. Maybe you've just... Amen, amen, amen. That's right. You have to have boundaries set up in place. It's not only to serve as a protection for you, but it's also to help you get along with others. You know, that's the reason why you have boundaries set in place. You know, it helps us to get along better. You know what um, gets, you know, you know what's hurtful to me. I know what's hurtful to you. So we try to avoid those things. When a person asks you nicely, you know, you try, I'm nice. I come out very nice the first two times. But if I have to tell you a third time, then I come out, raw. And trust me when I tell you, Sheila True Love is working very hard on trying to sugarcoat things and speak flowery with a lot of people because, you know, a lot of people are very sensitive. I think overly sensitive if you want my view, but I'm sure you've seen it over and over again on social media where people will make a comment and certain people will take offense to it, even though you weren't trying to offend them. But you have to be mindful of uh, different people, whoever you're dealing with. But like I said, the purpose of setting boundaries is to try to help you get along better, to protect yourself, and to let people know that you are not a, a, a floor mat. I am a Christian, yes, absolutely, in every sense of the word. But God did not create me to be anyone's jackass. I'm going to use that term. Sheila, true love, is still a stallion. I haven't let this world or these men or, or these crazy things break me. And I owe all of that to my Heavenly Father and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also to my mom, because she's the one who raised me to be a very strong Christian. And she raised me to have a strong mind. And I'm just so grateful that I am still a stallion. They still haven't broken me. <laughs> thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now are you ready for your Bible trivia questions for today? What Hebrew word is the same as the Greek word Christ? You can find that at John chapter 1, verse 41. The next one is a quotation question. How did Jesus say his baptism would be different from John's? Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Your next question and your last one for today, because I have to do some other things. In the parable of the good shepherd, what did Jesus say the good shepherd would do for the sheep? John chapter 10, verse 11. So there you have it, my beautiful sparkling diamonds. Jehovah loves you very much. Jesus Christ gave his life for you, so you know what's, what's up with that. And yes, I get up each and every morning to give you your empowerment, your daily devotional, so that must show you how much I do love you. And I want you to go out there and have an amazing day. I want you to have the kind of day that you know you deserve. I love you.